And welcome back to Stories from the River. This is your host, Charlie Maloof, and we've got a special treat today. I am here with Coda Bennett from the coast, from Wilmington. Uh, I'm here with Coda. He is a home furnishings expert, a VIP sales manager, and a multiple million dollar memory maker at the river. Coda, welcome to the pond. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you for having me. It's awesome to have you here. And it's so good to have you. And uh, thanks for driving in. You drove over three hours late last night. Mm -hmm. I think you stayed an extra hour late closing the store to get a big sale. I did, I did. Yeah, and hotel accommodations, they, they treated you well? They <laughs> treated me well. I got down here. I uh, have nothing to complain about. Fantastic. Got you a good night's sleep and we're ready to roll. I'm ready. Welcome to Stories from the River, a show in which we go behind the scenes at Broad River Retail. Apparently, your name is Dakota, but somehow it got shortened Dakota when you joined Broad River. How'd that come about? Uh, that, you know, I'm not entirely sure. I remember moving down here, though, and uh, we were uh, sitting down and we were calling off names and everything, and uh, Sam Van Giesen was like uh, Coda Bennett and I kind of just like looked over and I was like, uh, here? <laughs> and uh, I don't know how it happened, but um, it stuck and uh, honestly, like I, I prefer it. <laughs> All right, so you prefer it now. Uh, maybe it's, if people heard what my mom called me, they, they sometimes my friends do and they shorten my name too. So anyways, we won't get into that. Sam, thanks for coming up with uh, Coda's new Broad River name. <laughs> well, you know what it was? It was the uh, North Dakota, South Dakota. Every time I'd say my name was Dakota, it was North or South. So we got rid of that. So now it's just Coda. <laughs> okay, that's cool. That's cool. All right. So anyways, before we get into the business aspects and you said you're, you're feeling fresh, you got a good night's sleep, feeling good this morning, and we're going to keep it fun and fresh today for our audience and uh, super excited to talk to you. You got some stylish, you're known for your shoes, man. So the shoes are rocking today. I don't know if you can. I got the shoes. Brought the, got shoes. the shoes. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So tell us a, you know, about yourself personally, mm -hmm. where you're from, how long you've been at the river. Um, so I'm originally from a little town, a uh, little big town, Norwalk, Ohio, uh, just south of um, Sandusky, Cedar Point, if uh, you guys are familiar. Uh, I've been with Broad River now for a little over four years, just celebrated that. So um, yeah, from uh, Ohio, took a leap and moved down here. You just hit your four-year anniversary, like June 23rd, the date that we're recording this is June 28th. So you're you're four years and five days to the day. So we'll get into that a little bit too. What, what do you think our audience should know about you and your life before the river? Before uh, I moved down here, I was actually ironically working at a Renaissance Marriott hotel and uh, during COVID got furloughed and I ended up working three other jobs and I decided that I was ready to move. And I just started looking at jobs everywhere. And I remember seeing Ashley Furniture in Cary, North Carolina one day. And I'm like, hmm, I got a furniture background. Uh, my grandpa owned a furniture store for over 80 years. And I was like, I could probably do furniture. And I ended up applying and talked to uh, Ray Templeton. And he did an interview with me. It was a 40 minute interview while I was cleaning a room at the Renaissance Marriott <laughs> Hotel. And uh, 10, 15 minutes of it was an actual interview. The rest of it was us talking. Wow. And the very last thing he said to me was, um, consider yourself hired. Can't promise anything, but consider yourself hired. And literally 10 minutes later, I got a call saying, hey, when can you start? And I was like, well, whenever you need me. They needed me in three weeks. And uh, so moved down here within three weeks. That is wild. Was North Carolina ever in your like, purview your radar like that's a target place i want to move to from ohio so my aunt actually lives in fort mill okay uh south carolina so just right down the street mm -hmm. and so i'm i was familiar with north and south carolina but uh i was i was just looking to get out and covid really was that that click that was like it's time to go I was going to eventually move. COVID was the reason for the lights to go on and be like, it's it's time. So I just took it. But you you had been furloughed, but then you had, I guess, restarted back with the Renaissance because you said you were doing your interview while you were cleaning your room at the Renaissance Marriott. Yeah, they brought me back uh, to clean rooms. They couldn't bring me back at the front desk because of, you know, COVID protocols and things like that. And the traveling business took a huge hit. So, but... I spent a lot of time there and they were training me to become a manager. And so they just wanted to bring me back and I was cleaning a room and was going through interviews and 
that was a day I will never forget. Wow. And you said your grandpa owned a furniture store for 80 years? Correct. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, that was my daycare. Okay. <laughs> that was my daycare. I spent every day there. That's awesome. So what was your mindset four years ago when you joined? My mindset four years ago when I joined was excitement. Um, it was a huge leap of faith. I mean, I've never worked a full commission job before. So it was kind of kind of scary, but it was one of those things I was so excited to do. And plus, I was moving down to a warmer climate. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. uh, the leap of faith was exciting. Yeah. Well, you were moving down in the middle of the summer uh, to the Carolinas and, uh, and, and getting a place and getting set up on your own and down here and, uh, during COVID, during a wild time. Yeah, it okay. was wild. So well, like we said earlier, you're nearly four years to the day. D did you think four years ago, you'd be sitting across from me as a multiple million dollar memory maker, a home furnishings expert, a sales manager, a brand new homeowner, a recent homeowner, and one of the leaders in the company to share your story for our company podcast? I'm not sure what I would have expected. It definitely wasn't this. And that made the journey even better. So awesome. I am dumbfounded by it, but very happy and very excited for it. <laughs> what a journey. Okay, then. With that preamble, let's dig in. We've got a lot of ground to cover. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Onboarding in Retail 101. I tend to believe that everybody remembers their first day in a new job with a new company. Do you remember your first day? And if so, what was it like? I do. Uh, it was nothing that I don't believe Broad Rivers ever uh, dealt with. Um, the whole world was still up and going with COVID. It, I believe it was the first time that Broad River did virtual um, C4 and going through everything. And I remember Heather Greenwood uh, was one of the first people that spoke on the actual virtual meeting. And she introduced and made things very comfortable, uh, made it impactful. I believe Ke Kevin Kinman was on it. Stacy McCormick, I believe Stacy just started a few months before I did. Um, so that was exciting. And so I remember, remember those things. And I remember we still kept it exciting because that was one of the biggest things you guys wanted to do was keep it exciting. Even though it was just a virtual doing, we had to make it impactful. So that's your retail one-on-one -on -one experience, like look, going, being on Zoom or Teams and looking at everyone in a, like, a box and having interactive. But what about your first day? You, you, did you take retail one-on-one -on, -one on your very first day? The very first day, uh, we were going over different products and kind of just, you know, getting more in depth with the products. I do believe we started it the, the very first week. I don't believe it was the first day. I think the first day was just onboarding. But after that, it just kind of flew in with the, uh, uh, the virtual. Got it. So who is your initial general manager in Cary? And, and who were some of your coworkers, your fellow memory makers in, in that store? Well, you might know her, uh, Sam Van Giesen. Oh, yeah. She, uh, she was the general manager. She just became the general manager of Carrie, I believe, earlier that month. Uh, so she was the GM. Leah Hayes, Karen Bayard, uh, and Boris McBurnett. Uh, he was there as well. Uh, great relationships, great people to work with as well. Uh, they they made things so much more comfortable when I started. Several top writers and million dollar memory makers, uh, including Sam. She was mm -hmm. very successful on the sales floor too. So 2020, the, our united year, COVID, the pandemic, you, you, like you said, you joined at a time when COVID was ramping up, when people were stuck at home, and when you had to wear a mask, a face mask at work all day, what was 2020 like for you at work? You had to change how you presented yourself. And I did that by, you know, your, your face, your smile means a lot when you connect with somebody. And that was impossible during a time where we had to wear masks. Yeah. So what I did was I came out with the shoe gimmick and it allowed me to break the ice with my guests, made things comfortable, made it fun. That was my smile with the shoes, the shiny shoes. It made my personality speak louder and it made my smile come out in just a different, you know, a different way. So were you a shoe guy prior to joining the company or did that, was that something you added when you had to wear a face mask and couldn't, people couldn't see your smile? That was something that kind of got blended. Um, when I worked in the hotel industry, you know, we're behind a desk, so we don't, you know, you're not really seeing the shoes anyway. Uh, I've always enjoyed shoes, uh, but um, I just, I, I've, I like 
bright colors and I like personality. And so it just really allowed me to break the barrier. Awesome. So the, we, you know, 2020, the back calf is known for its supply chain disruptions, especially during COVID. And, and so in the back calf of 2020, in the first six or seven weeks of 2021, uh, a major, were the supply chain disruptions a major negative impact for you? Did they cause a lot of cancellations? I didn't allow it. Uh, I did my best and I thank Sam uh, for, you know, motivating us and keeping on us to follow up with our guests. That was the big thing. Guests wanted to make sure that they weren't being left in the dark. And so we do the follow-up calls. Yeah, things were taking longer to get in, but a lot of guests were aware of that situation. So we made the worst, you know, worst worst uh, scenarios into the best that we could. So we, me personally, I did not allow it to affect me uh, as much. And we had some disruptions, but, you know, we had to get through it. Yeah. And so, you know, I realize you're brand new to the company then. So you, you probably didn't even have a pre-COVID comparison on, on what it was like, you know, when times were good and supply chain was good. But what did your, do you recall what your open orders backlog grew to? It, it got up to 200,000 wow. in open orders. Um, I believe it even got up to 250 at one point. That's pretty strong for a brand new, I mean, you were brand new and selling and not necessarily everything was being delivered. So you're like, gosh, I got to get this, get this product delivered so I can get paid on it. Uh, so you talked about selling with a mask and letting the shoes be kind of your sizzle. You know, how, how was it selling while wearing a mask? I mean, and connecting with your guests. It wasn't the easiest thing, but it was one of those things as, as it went on. I mean, we were wearing a mask, I believe for 10, nine months after I got hired on. So Again, you just go back, you have to make the best of what you have. If you don't, you know, you're going to put yourself into a corner. So it, it it became more opening. And with the shoes, you know, we break the ice and then we just start talking about other things and we'd make it personal where you can still see the smile behind the mask. Yeah. You can see the, you know, the, the smile, the cheeks going up and yeah. everything. So That's it cool. made the difference. What did you learn about the company during the pandemic? Resiliency. Mm. Didn't let anything affect us uh, during that time. Still mm -hmm. don't. But we never gave up. Mm -hmm. Guys never gave up on the guests or for, you know, us as uh, HFCs mm -hmm. as well. So resiliency. Cody, what did you learn about yourself during the pandemic? How much I will give to better myself mm. and to adapt. That That's probably the number one thing I've found out about myself. That's a great self-awareness insight to get when you're going, when you're in the foxhole and going through something. So... After nine months on the job, you earned your first promotion from home furnishings associate to home furnishings consultant. Had that been one of your goals when you started with the company? It was my, my whole mentality when I got started was, you know, taking that big jump from Ohio down to North Carolina, knowing nobody, having really nothing to build on at the moment. I just wanted to have the most excellence that I could have. And so it was definitely not a foreseen goal, uh, but once I hit it and once I knew I was on track for it, I was I was ready and I was ready to go. That's awesome. And did you achieve the promotion in the time that you expected? I think I did it faster than I expected. Yeah. I really did. Yeah, that's that's great. And and how did it feel to be promoted in sales from an HFA to an HFC, something that is, you know, actually fairly unique in our industry. It's life-changing, Charlie. Um, I mean, it changes your paycheck. Mm -hmm. It changes the way you look at uh, coming in every day, you know, and giving that experience to the guest. I mean, it just, it, it self-motivates you too, mm. you know? So that you, feel that, you feel that progress and that sense of accomplishment and achievement, mm -hmm. which is a boost to kind of keep going. Okay, right. I'm mastering this skill. Let me keep growing with it. Yeah. That's, that's good. It gives the, you momentum. Exactly. The train was on the tracks and we weren't stopping. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Okay. So now 2021, you've been promoted. It's uh, it's our year of forward together. How was 2021 for you? I mean, did sales start to click for you at some point during that year? 2021 was kind of, so I finished uh, from June to December that first year. Unfortunately, I wasn't a million dollar writer in that time frame. Only six months. Correct. Yeah. And uh, when, so when 2021 came on, I mean, we just talked about, you know, the trains on 
train's mm-hmm. going, it's not stopping. That was, I'm like, okay, this is the year, you know, we're, we're going to achieve it. We're going to do everything we can to persevere and everything. And it, it did click. It clicked very, very fast. And there we went. Yeah, it, it actually did because you earned expert status, your second promotion by the end of 2021. That's like, you're not even with the company two years and you kind of skipped a couple levels and now you're an expert. That's an expedited fast track. I, I'm assuming, and I, I think I know the answer to this, you also reached the million dollar mark in sales that year in 21. So were those both goals that you had when you began the year? That that was a great time. I remember finishing up the year and uh, Karen Bayard came up to me and she's like, you know, you're on track for expert, right? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, no. And uh, her and Leah both came up to me and she's like, all right. they were both like, all right, this is what we need to do. It was so unexpected. Uh, and I, I love that it happened so spontaneously like it did because it just motivated me. I'm like, if I can do this... I can do this. And yeah, I became the million dollar writer for uh, that that year and elevated it. When did you cross the mark that year? And, and what do you remember what that first celebration was like? September, uh, oh, wow. September 2021. And I remember Sam was there. Sam stayed late for me, which absolutely loved that. And my team was there. We shot off the confetti. I had my guests. I still have the photos. And I mean, we were wearing our masks, but you can you can see the smiles on both the guests and my face. That's super uh, cool. Something I'll never forget. That's that's really cool. And and so what does it mean, you know, to be an expert at the river? It means a lot. You know, I look back to see where I started and now I I'm looking at a four time a million dollar writer and a two time expert now. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I'm proud of myself. And I thank the company for, you know, allowing me to take these steps to better myself. Well, you should, you should be proud of yourself. And it's an awesome accomplishment. It it makes me feel good. It does. Every full year you've been a million dollar writer. So that's fantastic. How important do you think is the career path for our retail performance sales force I mean, it's crucial. I mean, it's it's so important. And I mean, without it, you know, it's it it you, you're taking away a lot of your ammo, mm. you know. So having that just helps elevate it. And that's one thing I always talk about is you know, Broad River's elevated. Yeah. And if if you had one title for your for four years, you might not feel that sense of accomplishment, achievement, momentum. You just I don't know. You might feel a little bit kind of just treading water. And that's possible. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I, I look back and I think at the positive, like, Hey, like I did this Mm -hmm. broad river did this for me. And that's how I'm always going to look forward and be grateful for what I have and not what I didn't. That's awesome. All right. 2022, our year to thrive. We had survived. We proved we could thrive in 21. That became our word of the year in transitioning to the coast. So we had acquired the two Wilmington Ashley stores in December of 21. And then you decided to transfer and join Rick Rush and make the move to the coastal region in late March of 22 as a sales manager as well. What led to your decision to transfer and make the move? It, it was a lot. Uh, you know, I was celebrating about a year and a half uh, over at Cary. And I remember Sam told us in our morning connection that she would be leaving Carrie to go to Raleigh. Well, to find out, she was replacing Rick, who was moving to the coast. And so I talked to Sam, and Sam got in touch with Rick and was like, hey, uh, you should talk to Coda. Coda's interested about coming to the coast. Well, Sam tells me that he wanted me to come over as uh, the VIP sales manager. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, well, I only imagine going over as a sales you know, consultant. Yeah, yeah. And so I talked to Rick and he's like, yeah, I'd really like for you to be, you know, our VIP manager. And I mean, I love our VIP. Mm-hmm. So I took that leap of faith and came over and have not looked back. That's awesome. I'm going to get into the VIP aspect for our guests, our, our listeners who don't know what VIP is, but we'll come back to that. Put that in the parking lot for just a moment. <laughs> uh, Cause I know you have a lot to say on that topic. So what was the transition like for you at first in Wilmington? It was definitely, I mean, it was exciting. So mm-hmm. do not get me wrong on that. Um, I was excited. I was ready to go. And it was a lot because 
you know, they used a program called uh, Profit. Mm -hmm. We're switching over to Storis. Yeah, we had not done the ERP conversion just yet, or maybe it was just starting when you when when you started there. Yeah, and that that was beginning of April of tw uh, April twenty twenty two, and only Rick and I were the people from Broad River that knew anything about Storis. So I was doing a lot of the training for my HFCs and helping them get to, uh, through it and everything, sacrificing off the sales floor to help them because we're a team. Yeah. You know? Well, what a, what a blessing for the, for us to have you go down there and help Rick and, and everyone else from corporate who went down, you know, Will Luke, Kelly Jones, um, every, you know, Stacy, Carl, Brian Declanick, Cherie, et cetera, everyone who kind of had an experience with Storis and going down and helping, but to have someone in the store full time uh, really helped us a lot too. I mean, that helps the transition and go smoothly. Did you go to the other store or uh, some as well, you and Rick? Not not me personally. Mm -hmm. I do believe early on we did have the other store come over yeah. and we kind of just kind of played it out and everything. But I will tell you that year uh, we um, had our team go over C4 and Rick gave me the privilege to teach that out to them and with uh, with his knowledge as well. And that that made things really comforting and that he had the trust in me and everything to lead our team. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting you with that. I like your perspective on it, too. So your previous experience in Cary, how would you say it compared to your initial experience in Ogden? Other than, you know, the intensive training and getting everyone onboarded uh, onto Storis. It's a different atmosphere, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, I, I like the differences that both can have. You know, it's definitely a little faster pace and, and carry, uh, but I, I like the slow down method that Wilmington is. But other than that, I mean, they're comparable in the fact that, you know, the amount of training and everything you put in is just as important doesn't matter if you're in wilmington doesn't matter if you're in Cary or you know at university or any of those stores yeah well, let me ask you this i'm curious about your compensation as a sales manager in ogden compared to an hfc in Cary. did you earn more in 2022 compared to 2021 i did uh so even even in 2022 with me setting myself aside and helping my team get used to stores and you know the the different processes and everything we still made it vitally important that i was on the sales floor along with them and doing what i can and so and you know with all the bonuses and everything that broad river offers to sales managers it makes a big impact, not only on your paycheck, but how you feel every day that you come in, knowing that you're not, you're not losing anything. Yeah. You're benefiting a That's lot. Good. Okay. So now we're going into 2023, our year to elevate. So entering 2023, do you recall what were your goals and your mindset? 2023, there was a lot. So we just finished up you know, the remaining year uh, with stores from April to December. And I mean, that that's a lot of time to kind of get accustomed to it. So 2023 was like, you know, now we're off the tracks and now we're just, we're going, you know, we're going wild and we're going to, we're going to get used to this. We're going to make it smooth. And so we just busted it and, you know, and we, we ended up, uh, you know, w winning the cowbell trophy uh, one month too. And now for our listeners, what is the cowbell trophy? The store with the highest cowbell percentage for the month uh, gets a gets a nice trophy, and I'm especially proud of it uh, because Rick Rush it was his first time getting it, and it meant even more to me that I was able to do that as well as within yeah. the first year. And so we count you know all of our traffic coming in, and it's how many credit apps, which is a good lead indicator for us. We're getting as a percentage of the guests coming in, and. I think probably the first time Ogden had ever won it. That's a pretty, because there's some stores who do really well with that. And uh, as a yield of guests coming in to get the credit apps and to get it. And so we call it the cowbell counter because you, you want to answer that? 
Yeah, yeah. So we call it the cowbell counter because every time uh, we get that guest approved uh, through VIP, uh, we ring that bell for them. That's right. Get, get the excitement. And that's one big thing that during uh, COVID made the difference is, you know, you ring that bell, you get even more excitement mm-hmm. in there. Yeah. So it's it means a lot. Yeah, that's, that makes it fun. Okay. But you lost your expert status in 2023. And I'm not trying to rub salt in an open wound. <laughs> I think you've closed the wound. But so, well, what, what did what do you attribute that to, and, and how did that impact you? Losing it, it it was a mixture of different things. And I mean, I I, I guess uh, the best best thing to say is, you know, I I, I dropped the ball of more times than what I should have, and uh, but it made me hungry. It 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 made me starving, honestly, when I lost it. Like, I was like, I need to get it back. <laughs> yeah. You lost it at the end of 22 or midpoint of 23? So I lost that uh, July 2023. Okay. And so I lost it those last those last months, but the very last day of the very, uh, the very last day of 2023, uh, I got the one last app to to become a expert again. That's fantastic. That's, that's a cool story right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I, you know, I've looked at your roles with us after losing your expert status, obviously, like you said, you climbed the ladder again to last day. And so then what were your sales? So it sounds like the back half of 2023, you really kind of, you got it back on the tracks, got it going, that momentum going downhill again, uh, and going pretty quickly. So what were your sales numbers by the end of 2023? At the end of 2023, uh, it was it was just over 1.2 okay. and million. Did, and did that beat your numbers from 2022 or 21? It, it beat my numbers from 2022. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I dropped uh, a little bit on in 2022, but 2023, I 2023, I just gained it back. That's and I awesome. Was, I was going and in the back half probably too. And so, yeah. how did your income compare in 23 versus 22? Because 22 had been your best income year. Mm-hmm. So, how did it compare in 23? bought a house <laughs> hey, <fingers. laughs> bought a house i mean it 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 changed my life you know that's awesome so you kept growing your income as yeah. well yeah and uh in, i think your new house is right outside of wilmington yep in uh bolivia so near southport or oak yeah. island if anyone's familiar and how did that come about it spontaneously uh i went down on vacation and my lease was coming up uh on my apartment in wilmington I was getting ready to renew it and I found out it was going to be going up like $300 in a month. And I'm like, it just clicked with me. I'm, I'm a single guy. Uh, so I didn't really think I needed a house, but I'm like, why am I paying for something I'm not getting anything out of? So within literally within a month, I came back from vacation and I looked at three houses. And when you know it's time, it's time. That's and really cool. I've seen that persevere for me in the past. Yeah. And I took the leap of faith again and uh, I haven't been happier. But well, congratulations. That's Thank that's you. awesome. So the, all the benefits of home ownership and probably some house projects in, on days off as well. So many, so many. I keep myself busy. <laughs> uh, all right. So we talked about reaching expert status again in tw- at the end of 23 and crossing the million dollar mark again for the third year in a row by the end of 23. Uh, and I remember speaking to you after you crossed and, you know, we had a pretty long conversation about a lot more than just business. And, uh, so I got to ask you, how have you been keeping in contact with your grandpa? I am, uh, you know, he opened a furniture store with his, um, with his dad, you know, over, oh my, well now it's over a hundred years, uh, but they had that furniture store for over 80 years. So he's been the closest person I've had for a long time and I have him to thank for, you know, everything that I've accomplished and taking this jump in furniture. So yeah, I, I talk to him about three times a week, if, if not more. Mm-hmm. And I just talked to him about, about, I think it was Monday or Tuesday. I got an email from Caitlin and, uh, you know, she asked if I wanted to be on your podcast and, you know, I, I had no words for him and he had all the words to say and, and that meant the world to me. And he'll be the first person I talk to as soon as I get done here as yeah, well. That's also, I know he was keeping you company on your drive last night too. Have you been up to see him uh, a few times? 
So he doesn't know this yet, okay. but I'm going to be going up there uh, July 21st. It is going to be his birthday. Oh, fantastic. So I'm going to surprise him for his birthday. That's awesome. Well, this may not air by then, so you may have already surprised him. Uh, and maybe y'all can listen to this or watch this. For, that's, that's, that's great that you're doing that. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not giving it away just yet. All right, just a few more questions here for, for the first part of this conversation. All right, 2024, our year to connect. And uh, what are your goals for this year? And are they the same as when the year began or have you adjusted them? I mean, you're off to the races right now. You're having a great first half of the year. I think you're well over 700,000 or something so far. Maybe you're over 750. I haven't checked the numbers after your late night sale. Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong on any of that, but what are your goals for this year? And have they been the same as when you began or have, have you adjusted them at all? They change every year, Charlie. Uh, my first year with Broad River, is about getting comfortable. 2021 was about getting the wheels spinning. 2022, going over to Ogden, uh, Port City now. Uh, it was about getting my team ready and going and being a leader. And then we go, you know, we keep on, we keep on going forward. And I've, I've about doubled my numbers from last year. And that's really impacted me. And I've seen what I've been doing with my processes and everything. So as of right now, you know, my goal is to just keep on going and not letting letting go of that gas pedal and keeping my foot on foot on and making myself proud, making my family proud, making Broad River and you proud. You 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 make us proud every single day. You're doing a great job. Thank you. All right, leadership responsibility. Shifting gears to the topic of leadership. What was the catalyst to prompt you to pursue the sales manager role when you moved to Wilmington in 2022? I love VIP, Charlie. Um, shout out to Leah Hayes. I mean, she she coached me. I remember the last, man, I worked, I think, a month and a half before I transferred over to Ogden. And she taught me everything I know about, you know, VIP. Rick has a lot to do with it too, but Leah just took it and she she made sure I knew everything about you know, our lenders and how to present VIP and, you know, different things like that. So just my love for VIP really catapulted on why I want to do this. And not only that, but I love helping people and taking on a leadership role is new to me, was new to me, and it it's made me better and I hope I've made that impact on my team too. Yeah. So to be the VIP, so you knew several weeks in advance and you said, Lee, I want some help. Can you walk me through being a VIP sales manager? It's not even that I asked for help. She, she took it head on and that's why I give her so much kudos. Oh, awesome. She she came up to me and she's like, okay, we're going to sit down. We're going to take time. We're going to go over this. We're going to go over this. And I was more than happy and more willing to do it because she knew you're going to go into the sales manager role. Mm -hmm. yep. How cool is it to have coworkers to help each other and you're paying it forward now too. Mm -hmm. And and I know you have a strong belief in VIP because we talked about that and VIP is what for what's the one word that you called it earlier? It's it it is our biggest unlock generally. Yeah. It is our biggest unlock. Me and Brian Fuller talk about it all the time. We had one of the best talks uh our last uh, gala. Um, and, you know, we're just always trying to make it better. But, you know, it is our biggest unlock, not only for us as sales associates or as a company, but also for the guests. Yeah. And so what is your favorite part or most fulfilling aspect of being on the leadership team at the store? The most fulfilling would just being able to help my team and being there when they when they need me. I make it known, you know, that I'm always going to be here for them. Mm -hmm. And so just helping them out and making sure that they're set up for success. That's awesome. How have you grown as you've taken on more responsibility as a sales manager? Rick Rush will tell you, um, it, the person that I am today is not the person I was when I first started at Ogden. I've, I've seen myself grow uh, through, through the lenses and I have just bettered myself. I've seen myself become more mature in the actual position as well. And I've just seen a lot of growth with it. And he tells me all the time. And it, that makes me really proud and happy to hear that from my general manager as well. Me becoming the sales manager has become my biggest unlock, taking that leadership position and being able to help the others around me. That's my biggest unlock right now. To, to fulfilling your potential? Correct. That's awesome. Is there anything that you have learned about leadership that you weren't expecting prior to becoming a sales manager? 
I mean, there's there's a lot that goes into being a leader and, you know, especially leading a, multiple people in a team. Um, I would just I would just say, like, it, it's the amount of work that you have to put in and keeping that positive mentality mm -hmm. and spreading it to the team. But once you have that unlocked and able to spread it, it becomes natural. Yeah. All right, Cody, that has been an awesome conversation for part one. Let's bring you back and let's do part two and get into more of your story and who you are, what makes you tick, goals, habits, secrets to success, all that good stuff. How's that sound? Sounds great. Awesome. Hey, thank you for joining us here at Stories from the River. We try to bring you fresh new content every Tuesday and Thursday with some of our top leaders and fellow memory makers here at the river, give you stories behind the scenes, what makes them successful, what are their secrets and tips that they have to offer and to tell their unique stories, the, the real heroes here at Broad River. So thanks for joining us. Hey, leave us a comment or tell us how we can get better or mash that like button or subscribe button. Uh, if, if you feel so inclined, that really helps us grow the uh, podcast and take your feedback and, and get better. So thanks for joining us. Come back next time and we'll finish up with part two with Coda Bennett. Thanks for listening to Stories from the River. To check out more episodes, visit storiesfromtheriver.com. Join us again next week and remember to like, rate, and subscribe to the podcast.